All rise. I want viewers watching my show to believe in themselves. Judge Hatchet is compelling. I was not the first one to throw a walk. Let me just tell you what you just said. Compassionate. I really enjoy being a judge. Now I am touching people who I will never know I touch. She's powerful. You should have never let them walk out of your life when she was three. And she's on the bench. Don't get me preaching up in here today. Right. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchet. Craig and Natasha Melbourne are suing Linda Melbourne in the amount of $1,500. Mrs. Melbourne claims her mother-in-law stole her wedding reception dress and had it altered for her own vow renewal ceremony. You are in here suing your mother-in-law. I don't mean, understand. clearly there is more going on than this $1,500 claim. Why is it necessary for you to be in court with your mother-in-law, so you've got your mother-in-law on one side of the court, and you're standing here with your husband, so this has got to be tough for you. You've got your wife right here. You've got your mother on the other side of the courtroom. What in the world is going on? Your Honor, I've tried to establish a relationship with my mother-in-law, but it's been near impossible. Like, this woman has Why? made it clear that she does not like me. Why she... doesn't she like you? I don't know. I don't know. I always try to engage in conversations with her. I try to plan events for us to go to, but she just, she's clear about her distaste. So I try to like, you know, I still try to keep it, you know, amiable. So, but... uh, she says that you don't like her. What's going on? That's not true. I love her. I love oh, you do? Yes, I That's do. That's a very different story from what she just said. Well, the What's thing... going on between the two of you all, honestly? Well, well, my son, I raised him. I raised him to be a good man. And since she has come into his life, he's late for everything. She doesn't want to come when he comes over to the house. He's alone. She doesn't fix dinner for him. That, All she lie. does that's is complain. Lie. She stays that's at home. True. I've tried to take her under my wing and nurture her and show her the ropes of a wife and a uh, uh, potential mother, but she's just very rude and adamant about doing things her way. All she does uh -huh. is look at the TV and swipe, 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 swipe. That is not so true. Wait, 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 wait a minute. You said you love her, and then you went on a long list of things that you oh, don't like exactly. about her. Come on. All right. Obviously, Craig, you're listen. caught in the middle of this. What's going on? What's going on between your wife and your mother? Yeah, my mom's been on me for this for a long time. Um, you know, these are both the love of my life. I, uh, you know, I couldn't do anything without them. Uh, it's unfortunate. It's, it's all about this dress. Uh, mom used it by accident. It's all right, Mom. It but, wasn't um, an accident. No. All right, so let's get down to the core of why you all are here. What's going on with this dress? Tell me about this dress. Okay. So uh, my mother-in-law here offered to hold our things after our wedding. We got married a little over a year ago. We had our honeymoon, and she was keeping our things. So when we came back, she had had, she was having her vow renewal. So we had already said that she could borrow some of our things from the, the wedding that we had. We so said, you're yeah. having your wedding vows renewed, and you ask if you could use some of the things that they had left at your house for this ceremony. Absolutely. Renewing your vows. It, but right. they were supposed yeah. to come get those things seven days, within seven days. It ended up being over a year. These are their things. And I have talked to my son, and he knows how I am, how I feel about things, and how I do things, how I run my household. You didn't even come by. She well, did no... you say, listen, did you give him a deadline to, hey, come here, get these things by next Saturday, or I'm donating them? I did talk to them. <laughs> I, initially, I gave them seven days. But prior, after the seven days, I said, you know what? You got a month to come and get these items. Okay. And he never came to pick them up. All right. So now, but then you need to use the items. All yes. right. So you asked for permission to use the items, and you all said yes. Yeah. Now, how did we get in court about this dress? What's going on with this dress? Okay. So we asked, we told her that she could use the items, but not including the dress. The dress. So when we got to the So Valerie what kind of dress are we talking about? We're talking about a cocktail dress that I used for my wedding reception. Okay, so, so you had a wedding dress yes. and a reception dress. Yeah, I had a wardrobe change. All right. Yes. So the original dress was a little too ball gowny for the, the reception, so I wanted something lighter. 
So I had a couple of options in mind, and I even reached out to her, like I always do, asked for her opinion on what dress I should choose. She was certain, and she was adamant about this specific dress, even though I had something else in mind. But I was like, okay, like this is a bonding experience for us. So I chose that dress. And a while after, when she had her vow renewal, we showed up, I saw that the dress she was wearing, it looked familiar. And then I realized that it was my dress that she had made alterations to for her vow renewal. Wow. That is the truth. <laughs> so you altered the dress, I altered you wore the dress, the dress yes. which I wouldn't have had so much of an issue with, but you altered the dress and you never said anything to Natasha nor to your son Craig about I've, the dress? I've left voicemails with Natasha to talk to her about her items and initially I had asked her if I could use some of those items that I was storaging for them. Not the dress, And though. these items were in my home <laughs> way over a year, and I'm on the budget. And again, the dress, if, if I had not worn it that day, it would still be at my house today. Coming up on The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. This is his wife. Clearly, he's happy with this choice. So get out of their business. Well, he shouldn't come to my house and talk mom, about her. Mom. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. And later. Baseball, if a foul ball hits off the bat and hits someone's in the face, that could be a freak accident. This was a freak accident. It's normally just bruising. The Verdict with Judge Hatchett is back with the case of Craig and Natasha Melbourne, who are suing Linda Melbourne for theft. So you come in, you see the dress, and what do you do? So I, I confronted her, not in front of everybody, but outside after everything had ended. But while the reception... After, but not doing the, no, the ceremony. No, 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 no. I, I doing the reception. Be, but yeah, that wasn't day be rude she did, about it. and it was very inappropriate. And I, you It know, was not inappropriate. I, I mean, I am not people, rude to her. I'm very kind and patient with her. And when she came to me after the wedding, after we did our vows, everybody was happy, and all the guests were there having a good time. And she comes to me and talks about some stupid dress it people me. knew that it was my dress during the ceremony people were looking at the dress looking at me and whispering so I knew that they those same people came to our reception so they saw me wearing that dress so they know that it's mine so what did you say to her when you after everything's over now hopefully you did not put her on blast no I didn't she may as well I wouldn't, I wouldn't she may as well with her attitude <laughs> my guest knew something was wrong the way so what happened me. so you confront her and you say what I told her what was, I was asking her what was going on. I mean, like, that was my dress, and I saw that it was shorter, the, the waist was wider, the hips were wider, so clearly she had done something to it. So I was just confused, and I wanted answers about it, because I know I So what her, did you say to her? You said, why did you mess up my dress? Yeah. You shouldn't wear my dress? What did you say to her? I asked her why she was wearing it. And, and what did she say? Well, you said I could borrow your things, but obviously I didn't mean that. Like, that's my dress. How do you make alterations to this expensive dress that so I bought? So how do we come up with a $1,500 claim? That's how much the dress, dress costs. Dress costs. Yeah. Can the dress be altered back? No, Your Honor. Oh. Well, it could. It's um, it, could. I, I, it could. It could, Craig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could. Thanks, somebody is acting like they got some sense <laughs> in here today. <laughs> how much did you pay to have the dress altered? I paid 70 70, oh, that's probably not enough. Okay, so I'm gonna give you $150 to have the dress altered back. I want the dress back in the next 24 hours when you get home, and I want you all to get, you all have a week to go get everything out of her house. You understand? Everything out of the house. You're gonna get the dress altered um, to her satisfaction. You're gonna have her go over have the dress refitted, have it altered back the way it should be for her to have the dress back. Are we clear? Yes. But this yes. is more important than the $150. Do you understand this? Do you understand yes, this? Right? Yes, it is. And you all need yes, to work is. on this. And you cannot be so critical. If she doesn't cook for him, that's his, his issue if he wants her to cook. You know, and you're gonna tell her how she needs to be a wife, but well, clearly he made the choice. This is his wife, clearly he's happy with this choice, even if you're not. So get 
out of their business. Well, he shouldn't come to my house and talk mom, about her. Mom. Oh, ho, ho, oh, he shouldn't come to my house. Oh, 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 and he oh, shouldn't oh, come to my house to eat. Mom. <laughs> yes, you should not come to my house to eat. Mom, not in front of the judge, please. <laughs> yes, you know that's the truth. Okay, now the real story is going out. All right, you know what? <laughs> you know what? I can fix a lot of things. Your Honor, she's always starting stuff. Don't believe her. She oh, well, I don't know that she's not telling the truth. I'm not so, so sure. She makes box food. He oh come to my, my house God. for that was one. That was one night. That was just, one night. This is bigger than food. The issue is bigger than food. She don't want to learn. Well, listen, if she don't want to learn, then too bad. You know, you can't take all this on now. This is their business, but you can't then go run into your mama complaining about your way. Aha! Uh -huh. Cannot. Doesn't work that way. That's your right? honor. And if she's not cooking and then you run over and eat all your mama's food, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know, uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. I, mean, I know. Them grits, you know? Uh-huh, what? The, the grits, she makes the best grits. I, I know, I well, you know, listen. You know, look, Natasha, I've never been a good cook. My mother-in-law was an exceptional cook. My mother is an exceptional cook. I couldn't cook, you know? I mean, it's just, hey, it is what it is. And maybe you make the effort to do a little better, and maybe you all eat out. I don't know what you're going to do, but <laughs> I know that this, what's happening between you all is not working. You all need to get it straight, all right? Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $150 to have the dress altered back to the way it was. You all need to work this out. Are we clear? Yes, yes. ma'am. If nothing further, judgment for the plaintiff, for reasons I've stated, will stand adjourned. All rise. Judge Hatchett has ruled in favor of the plaintiffs. The defendant has been ordered to pay $150. I'm excited that I can get the dress re-altered, but I really do hope that we can repair our relationship. At the end of the day, we're still family, and we're going to work on our relationship. Coming up. When I took him home, I saw that he had some fluid coming out of his ear, and he said that he had some pain. So I took him to urgent care, and urgent care said his eardrum was ruptured. Network featuring dynamic judges and live legal programming. Well, we're not at your school. We're in my courtroom. Unique court shows. Where is any information about the company? Live legal news. That's what you should have done. And a commitment to justice. Either you tried or you did it. The next generation of court programming in one dynamic network. Justice Central. You're watching Justice Central. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm LeVar Burton, and we are here to celebrate the power of Juneteenth and honor black excellence. Don't miss Byron Allen Presents Juneteenth, a celebration of centuries of black excellence. Saturday at 8, 7 Central on The Grio. You're watching Justice Central. Coming up at 10.30, watch America's Court with Judge Ross. Then catch a double dose of We the People, followed by Supreme Justice with Judge Karen at noon. The verdict is in, right here on Justice Central. You're watching Justice Central. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. Nicole Marcus is suing Jeremy Dillon in the amount of $5,000. Ms. Marcus claims her son was seriously injured after playing paintball at Mr. Dillon's house without her permission. All right, Ms. Marcus, you are here with your son, Derek, and you are suing the defendant because you say basically that your son was injured while he was a guest at their home. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right, so begin. Tell me what happened. So... I took my son over to their so I took my son over to their house and met the dad and we exchanged numbers and they're gonna play video games and I left and came back at five o'clock. He got in the car, I looked at his neck and saw a great I have a picture of it. Hi. Right. So you pick him up and he's injured. Yes. All right, so how do the boys know each other? How do you how do you guys know each other? We go to school together. Go to school together. And so were you invited to his house to visit? Yes. And so tell me, tell me what happened. So it was Thursday, and we have a class together and everything. We have three of them. So it was Thursday in history class. He invited me over on Saturday to come play paintball. So you go over, and Cody, you invite him over, and what happens? Uh, so I invite him over, and um, we have a big field in the back of our yard uh, where my, my dad lets us play paintball. 
Um, and so it was a three-on-three, -three, really friendly game. We were playing for a couple hours, actually. And the last game, um, I guess Derek got hit in the back of the neck pretty hard. Um, and uh, he was in the bathroom for a couple minutes. I was asking him if he's all right. And uh, then his mom came, picked him up, and that was that. Coming up. Urgent care said that the eardrum was ruptured because of the noise. So I don't think they were provided with earplugs, and so that ruptured his ear. There is no dispute but the fact that you provided a helmet uh, that day for Derek and that he was wearing the helmet, um, and that it sounds like it was a freak accident. If I thought that they had had you out there with no gear, with no helmet, just out here running wild and playing paintball, I would be on you. I would give you hell in here today. But it was also a situation that I think that you took whatever precautions were necessary. And for that reason, Ms. Marcus, you are going to have to talk to Derek. That he's going to have to have better communications with you. So when you drop him off, it's my understanding that you thought that they were going to go play video games, right? That's correct. All right. And so Derek had a responsibility to say, hey, Mom, I want to go over to Cody's. He's my friend from school. And we are going to go play, but we're going to play paintball. I am so sorry this happened. But given the totality and the fact pattern here, I cannot find that Dylan's responsible for the injuries to your son under these circumstances, I am dismissing your claim for $5,000. We'll stand adjourned. All rise. Judge Hatchett has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim has been dismissed. I'm sorry this happened. This was a freak accident, and I wish your son well in his recovery. Next time, when he's injured on your property, please call me.